Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to add collision detection and make the character die if they touch an orc and make the objects to be collected disappear if the character picks them up. We're going to start by creating two global variables here at the top. A global variable is a different type of variable than local because a global variable is declared outside of a function. This means that the variable will be valid and accessible throughout the whole lifetime of the program. In this case, I set to be collected to 4 because I have 4 objects to be collected. I'm also going to create a second global variable called game over and set it to false to start with. Once we die, we're going to set this to true to stop certain things from happening. So let's go down to the bottom of our code and we are going to create a new function, function collision detection. Then we're going to have two parameters, object, which is going to be a string with the object ID that we're going to check if it's colliding with the knight. And the second is a Boolean variable, is enemy. If this is true, we're going to treat that object one way. If this is false, we're going to treat it another way. We'll create our curly brackets to start and end the function. And now we'll talk about the four things we need to check. The first thing we need to check to see if they're colliding is if this right edge of the hero has a greater x value than the x value of the left edge of the enemy. The second thing we need to check is if the left edge of the hero has a less x value than the right edge of the enemy. If these things are both true, that means it's colliding on the x-axis. Next, what we need to do is we need to check, does the bottom edge of the hero have a greater y value than the top edge of the orc? And then fourth, we have to check, does the top edge of the hero have a lesser y value than the bottom edge of the orc? If these four things are true, that means the bounding boxes of these two objects are colliding. There are eight pieces of information we need to be able to calculate these collisions. We need to know the x and y value of the upper left-hand corner of our hero. We also need to know the width of our hero's bounding box and the height of our hero's bounding box. Then we need to know the x and y value of the upper left-hand corner of the other object's bounding box. And then we need to know the width and the height of the other object's bounding box. So let's create some variables to hold that information and then retrieve it. Ver knight x equals git x position image underscore knight. Then ver knight y equals git y position image underscore knight. Next, we're going to get the x and y of the other object. The other object won't always be an orc. The object's ID will be a string inside the object variable. So we're going to say ver object x equals get x position object. Then ver object y equals get y position object. Now we need to calculate the width and the height. We're going to say ver night width equals get property. We want to get the property from the image night because that's the ID of our night. Then the property we want to get is the width. Next, we want to get the night height. We'll do the same thing with the object.
Sometimes people ask, why do we have quotations around this ID, but not around this one? That's because this is what's called a string literal. This is a string in amongst itself. On the other hand, this object is a variable that is holding a string inside it. So we only need to use quotation marks when we are dealing with a string literal as opposed to a variable holding a string. Now let's write the code to actually check to see if they are colliding. The first if we're going to write is a compound Boolean expression that's going to check two things. First it's going to check is the right edge of the knight, its x value, is that greater than the x value of the left edge of the object we're colliding with. And then on the other side it's going to check is the left edge of the knight less than the right edge of the other object we are checking. That'll mean that it's colliding on the x-axis. So we're going to say if night x plus night width. So we're adding night width because night x is just going to give us the value of that corner. Width is going to give us the x value of this edge. So we're going to see is that greater than or equal to the object x. And then we're going to say and so we can check the other side. And we're going to check is the night x, which is going to tell us the x value of the left edge, is that less than or equal to the x value of the object x plus the object width. And the object x plus the object width will give us the x value of this edge. Now if these are both true, that means we're going to be colliding on the x-axis. Now we need to check if they're also colliding on the y-axis. So we're going to make a nested if statement. That's going to check that. So let's move it up to the top. And we want to know if the knight y plus knight height. So that's going to give us the y value of the bottom edge of the knight. If that is greater than or equal to the object y, and the object y will be the y value of this top edge of the object, and we got to see if it's colliding on the other side. So let's move it down, and we got to see is the knight y, is it less than or equal to the object y plus the object height. So if both of these are true, that means we're colliding on the x-axis and we're colliding on the y-axis. So we're going to put this into full screen so you can get a better look at the code. And now we've got to figure out what are we going to do if the objects are colliding. Well, that partly depends on whether it's an enemy or not. So we're going to write an if statement that checks, is it an enemy? And since this is a Boolean expression, we don't have to do any comparisons. If this is true, it's going to evaluate to true. If this is holding a false value, it'll evaluate to false. So we not want to know if it's an enemy and is the game not over. So we put a not in front of it. So if game over will get reversed and if game over is false, then this will evaluate to true. Sometimes people write it a little differently. For example, if someone wanted to check if is enemy is true, you could write it like is enemy double equals or triple equals true. If you wanted to check if game is not over, you could write game over is not equals or not double equals true. However, this one is simpler and a little easier to read. So if those two things are true, then we want to first set game over to true, because the game is going to be ending, and second, we want to set the screen to the lose screen. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to check if it's an object to be collected. So we're going to say else if, and we're going to say not is an enemy, and again game is not over, so not game over. Then we have to check a third thing. We got to see if the object to be collected is an invisible. Because if it's invisible, that means we've already collected. So I'm going to say not get 
property. We want to get the property of whatever ID is in the object. And then the project and then the property we want to get is the hidden property. Because if it's invisible, it'll already be set to hidden. If it is not an enemy and it is not game over and that is not hidden, then we want to do several things. First we want to hide it. Hide element, because when you touch it, you hide it. And the element we want to hide is whatever ID is in the object variable. Then we want to decrement the variable to be collected, because we're collecting one of the items. So we're going to say to be collected minus minus. By the way, to be collected minus minus is just shorthand for to be collected equals to be collected minus one. Just takes one off whatever the old value was. Finally, we want to check have all the items been collected at this point. So we're going to say if to be collected is less than or equal to zero, which means all the items have been collected, and is the game not over? Because if the game's over, we don't want to do anything. If those things are true, we're going to set game over to true, and then we're going to set the screen to the win screen. So let's take a look at all this code. There's going to be some bunch of closing brackets down under here. Every time you open a bracket, you have to have a matching closing bracket. And we've got a lot of nested if and else's here. And we can also take a look at this in the block mode. So here's the top part. And we'll go down to kind of the middle part. And at the bottom, we're just closing things out. Now, this isn't going to get called automatically. We have to call collision detection from our timed loop for every object that might be colliding with the hero. So now let's go back to text mode. Go back to our screen, game screen. Let's go to our on event, our timed loop. So we're going to start by calling the collision detection once for each of the orcs. So we'll say collision detection. We'll say image underscore orc underscore one. Then we'll have a comma. The second argument that's going to go to the second parameter in this case is going to be true because the orc is an enemy. So let's copy and paste this twice. Change it to two. Change it to three. Now we're going to have to do the same thing for the four objects to be collected. So this will be item one. It is not an enemy, so we're going to pass a false value. Next, we're going to change this to item two. And again, pass a false value. Item three, false, and then item four, false. Let's take a look at this code in the block mode. There we go. Now that we've done this, why don't we put it back in the text mode? And let's try running our program and playing it. So we'll hit run. Let's start. So I'm moving my knight around. I collected that object. I collected that object. Let's see. Get that one. Oops. I hit an enemy. Let's try this again. Collect one. Two. Three. And then four, and then I won. So that's the basic function of the game. We're going to look in the next lesson about a few ways to tweak it and customize it. To see the next lesson in this sequence, please click on the video link in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. 
And to see the entire sequence, please click on the video link in the lower right-hand corner of the screen.